So it is my very great pleasure to introduce Toru to you tonight. I first met Toru nearly 20 years ago. He came to New Zealand, he did a PDC up in Tahiki with Miriam Tyler and Jim. And uh, I remember afterwards Jim rang us up, Joe and I on Rainbow Valley Farm, and said, we've got this wonderful young man here and you must take him. And we said, oh, look, we're really sorry, we're really full, we just can't take anyone. And two weeks later, Miriam ran back and said, but you've got to take this young man, he's amazing. <laughs> and so we did. And we, I'm so glad that we did because we got to know Toru and it was the start of a very great friendship uh, over many years. So Toru did, he, he took his permaculture knowledge he went back to Japan, he did what he said he was going to do. He set up a permaculture farm and he's going to tell us a little bit about that tonight. And he got married and he had a family and he brought his wife down to Rainbow Valley Farm for their honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to tell us about the experience that they had, the traumatic experience, the earthquake, the tsunami, and the radiation. Iwati, where Toru is from, was badly hit out on the coast. Toru was a little bit inland. And he's going to tell us about the permaculture emergency response that they mounted in a time when there was no fuel for cars. They made their fuel from waste oil, and he's going to tell us what they did. So I ask you please to put your hands together and warmly welcome Toru Sakurai. And to learn about palm culture, because palm culture was not uh, really uh, well known, not well known in Japan, and we have no Japanese publication, so we have to study hard in English. That was good for me too. And uh, actually, when I came here and I linked up to Miriam's Taheke Falls Tree Farm, they had a hard time at that moment. <laughs> so <laughs> they said, maybe we can't have you. So I asked, I beg you, please, I just want to learn about permaculture. Please, 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 I linked up. And I could. So I was looking at it. <laughs> okay. Like this. I was young like that. Oh, they are young here. Oh, they are young too. Yeah. And I, I learned heaps from my roofing. That, big, that was big experiments for me. But I was. Uh, doing organic farming before I came to Japan, uh, came to New Zealand. So I know a little bit about farming, how, how to do something like that. But permaculture idea was quite new for me. The holist holistic idea and how to build house energy generating, not only farming as you know. So, and I had PCDC like this. Get the certification. <laughs> and get starting in Japan. Uh, when I've got the PCDC in New Zealand, our tutor said, you have a big homework in Japan. You know, never uh, in Japan, anybody try to have a permaculture design farm at, at that moment. So I have to think about my um, our suitable way of permaculture design for, in, for Japan or for cold climate. Because I, came, I come from Iwate Prefecture, it's up north of Japan, Honshu. Like this location. Luckily, I could lease like this piece of land. That seems like ideal for me because beautiful terrace rice paddy there, there is a big pond to irrigate 
Rice Party. And uh, as Albert told yesterday, we have a beautiful Satoyama. I mean, uh, second forest by, uh, made by man, you know. We can collect mushroom and fire out from here. So well managed. Mm. So, but the land was surrendered more than 20 years. So there are so many bush already, bamboos and bushes. So I might choose this land. I might, may not choose this land if I was in New Zealand. If I, I'm not in, I wasn't in New Zealand. Because main, uh, the biggest things I learned from you, lots of things I learned from you heaps, learned from you, but uh, the biggest things I can say was the sentence. Every time I remember that this sentence, must be this word is too much classic because I never heard in this convergency the problem is the solution. Yeah. Mm. This words or this sentence is supporting me so long since I'm doing permaculture in Japan because there are so many trees in the rice paddy. Used to be this is rice, beautiful rice paddy, but surrender, so there is a tree. But uh, you know, in Japan, very hard to get land for like me, young people, very high price. So I list this land. Normally, we can't plant any trees at, in this land. But my, luckily, my land owner said, oh, you can plant trees, of course, because already there. <laughs> so surrender land is a big problem. So maybe we can't choose, but uh, I could. And cleaning up and uh, build my own, home, my own house and barn graduate and to have uh, pigs and the chickens to fertilize our soil because our topsoil nearly none, nothing. So because huge damage by earth moving. <clears throat> so make uh, heaps of compost, supply to the gardens and field and rice paddy. So I grow almost maybe, I never buy our vegetables now at the moment for my family and full stuff. So nearly 10 people live now uh, <coughs> my place. So this is summer crop with companion plants. And I um, after I go back in Japan, <coughs> I went back in Japan, I tried to have, get uh, traditional knowledge from our ancestors. Of course, we need to switch permaculture design, a permaculture idea to Japanese situation or our, our culture. So this is typical companion planting or edge effect, edge advantage of edge. So this is soya beans just beside of rice paddy. This is uh, because you know in Japan uh, before uh, before World War II. We almost a farmer was tenant farmer. They have no land access. So, you know, they've got only a few from landowner. So sometimes only two meter wide from uh, this bank to the field. So here is free for them. So they use such a small space to grow their soya bean to fermentate miso or show their need. So if, you know, we have plenty of space for the soya beans like this and grow very nicely. We never, of course, we never surprise and we never feed them. They grow nicely like this. And another good design from our ancestors, they plant a tree for hanging rices, like this beside the north side. That this is Arnas japonica, all that tree our native older tree. And uh, you know, they grow straight up like this. And we can prune them, they never mind. And uh, here is 
shape in the summer, you know. I don't have to talk about it like this for the permaculture people. <laughs> but uh, in the autumn, we can get sunlight to this area, so we can get dry prices. And we can get firewood, tanning, and uh, fallen leaves goes to rice paddy by strong wind, north wind in winter. So perfect design. So our ancestor never knows about palm culture, or the world of palm culture, but did a good design already. So we should learn more from our ancestor. I tried to get, and I think I'm only one person now. I'm, I'm sure, I'm quite sure, to hang like this existence. Already, uh, there is a huge uh, older tree in the uh, country area, but they never dry like this anymore. So it's great to have like that. <coughs> and companion planting with soya beans, because uh, uh, we have not fertile soil, so we grow. And we need actually so much soya beans for our diet to make a miso, show you soya, soya sauce. Mm. So, then good for winter job. We boil them during winter by wood stove, so we can make a, a work for the winter too. And winter was a bit problem for me. I was, you know, for doing farming, five months winter, it's a bit hard for the farmer, but still we can do in the winter. We can build our house and do a fermented job. This is koji making. We, we, we make a koji. And uh, they, such a little kids can help us to make a miso. <laughs> I'm not sure they can help. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I try. <laughs> this is soya sauce making in the summer, early summer to get fertilized. And I use uh, uh, magnolia leaves to get, to avoid uh, other um, farming, uh, other no goodies. So to keep uh, good fermentation. Uh, so then we grow organic good food and do a self-sufficiency and grow healthy kids, of course. <laughs> essential <laughs> to work hard outside. So, and you see, this is winter, snowy winter. Still they can do like this job. So luckily, <clears throat> we never go to doctor. They are 12 years old, nine years old, six years old. Never go to doctor without dentist, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but no doctor and no medicine, chemical medicine at all. We treat natural way of healing. Like, uh, so, so they are very nice advertisement for us to sell our products. <laughs> because they, they can prove, you know, we never need doctor from our products. So such a big advertisement like this. So, and big demonstration for the local people too. We send them to kindergarten at local place, and they go to school too, and they never get sick so seriously, you know, like a flu, and we, we, they've got, but uh, you know, they cure easily, like than other people, other kids. So they knew, though, you know, these three kids proof, like that things. Oh, I can't imagine, you know, local people say, oh, they never go to doctor. Mm. That's unbelievable like that. <laughs> mm. But I can't sell eggs local market, not so much still. <laughs> and so after uh, I set up my farming and the self sufficiency lifestyle, so as you told me, I start teaching to the people. So, <clears throat> and start teaching, and we did a PCDC, inviting Trish. And Joe, yeah, the more than 30 of people were coming, and that was my dream or uh, promise. Ten years later, I will do PCDC in Japan, so please come to. So, dream comes true like this. That's good, and honeymoon too. 
<laughs> yeah, just like this. After BCDC, and I'm teaching for the university, local university. So I go to university to teach too, and they come to my place and work together and learn more practical things like that. And we've got a participant from ALI, one graduate from Indonesia. Uh, some he's here. Mm. Yeah, some was last year at my place. So he was from Liberia in Africa, and he could t taught us a lot of things, uh, <clears throat> of course. And we, I was a roofer, now I'm a host. <laughs> yeah. And I've got uh, lots of roofer now from overseas, from Japan. Unfortunately, not last year, but uh, like this. And I did a big tour for them to introduce permaculture idea. Every time I got roofer, I did a big tour for them and uh, spread the idea too. <coughs> then I've got uh, the day. So I was making miso March 11th, just before earthquake. And actually, I, we got the film crew just before 30 minutes. So, I can show you this short film to you. So this is traditional way of how to make a miso. Oh, not traditional way, this is plastic, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But now, you know, almost factory is machinery, smashing, and but we make a quite nicely bowl and hit them, get out here, extra air. Now is the time to switch off. <laughs> Looks no, not so serious because we've got harder earthquake quite sometimes. But uh, this time it was so long. Not shaking so hardly, but so long. So, you know, the, just one minute later, the electricity on is, was off. Poor lady. Sorry about missy houses. She's very old. Mm. Must be okay. Can you feel a little bit? After this earthquake, 30 minutes later, we've got tsunami at the coast area. So there was a plenty of, not plenty, but enough time to run away from. But we had an earthquake the day before too. So it was quite big too. And it didn't happen tsunami the day before. So people, 
some uh, maybe half of people think about oh no no tsunami every time like that you know no tsunami so but some of people are not rush to the high area so it lots of people has died but uh, depend on how prepare for the emergency mm. of course unlucky people there are And the, that season was still cool, it's cold, I mean, it was snowing. And uh, some of them uh, died by too, too cold mm, that after tsunami, not just tsunami, exposure. And uh, there, there biodiesel bio adventure, they have a uh, great car which they can produce biodiesel uh, fuel at their car. So they travel all over the world like a Siberian, Sahara Desert. They can drive a third, three, uh, 3,000 kilometer without plug. Mm. So actually they are expert of uh, like this emergency. And of course, government tried to help the refugee people with asking an uh, army like this. But that works for the public refugee center like this bigger scale one. So people who come to here. But there are so many smaller community around the coastal areas and around the city, uh, which they have no uh, support from government. So I had that, that, like that news from radio. We had a small radio with solar panel, tiny small solar panel, and hand, hand operation we can do. So we had a three day off about electricity. So we only use, and the uh, biodiesel adventure people can get the information from internet into plug into using an uh, inverter from car. Mm. But so, we saw after big earthquake, still shaking, shaking all the day for three days, even at midnight. So our kids cannot sleep so long. Me too, of course. But uh, the shaking in the midnight is not just shaking ground was uh, feeling, for me, feeling like shaking my mind, our mind and our heart from higher, I'm, I'm not sure about that. I was feeling so long, oh, what can I do for like this situation? And I should, what, what do I think about? Like, uh, mm, like that feeling. So, uh, after a uh, big earthquake, and after two, uh, uh, for two days after earthquake, we can't go, anybody can't go to tsunami refugee people because of uh, control by police and, uh, and the army. <coughs> but later on, they can't say so because uh, they couldn't say so because we, they need lots of help because it was huge trouble at, up there. So I, we decided to help them because we had a uh, transportation can afford and we had plenty of food for emergency like rice and miso and water and old clothes. So we can do something. So anyway, we go like this, rice is, rice, well, we have plenty of stock of rice to sell, actually, but, uh, you know, no time like that. Uh, hundreds kilograms of rice we have, and the tons of miso is, because miso, we uh, make miso every year, and we have to keep them uh, two years before to sell. So we have plenty of fresh wine and all that one, so we, we can sell. And we did uh, research 
by internet and uh, where it's uh, isolated, you know, bigger scale uh, refugee center is okay, but uh, smaller community, very isolated places, so hard situation. <clears throat> and of course, lots of people try to help them, but uh, there was no fear at all. So this is, sorry, we can't sell, you know, in Japanese. So a month that was like this, for a month. We can't get any petrol or diesel fuel from shop. Mm. So this is like uh, after peak oil, huh? Mm. So we already have the experience. So we can't go anywhere. But people rushed to get a bicycle to the old local shop to get bicycle to have a shopping and uh, and lots of family have a walk with kids and the people we never see in the local community walking by uh, shopping by walking people and shopping by bicycle never see in local area they use every time oh, of course we are uh, by car, but uh, after the peak oil, we should do that, sure. Mm. Yeah, like this, but people, almost people try to get much earlier, much earlier, pushing, pushing, like this, all the night, they are waiting, waiting. Lots of people just waiting with heater, so they have no more fuel, so they just let their car away uh, uh, in the, on the road. So that caused more panic, you know. Mm. The kilometers long, long, long to get the uh, petrol for months. Mm. And of course, there is no food in a supermarket like this. No fresh food, no noodles, no rice. Only little thing, can you see this one? Sweet coffee, sweets, <laughs> juice, alcohol. We don't need like that now, emergency. So there is some still left over, but no, no food at all. <laughs> but we can take with us fresh egg, meat from freezer, uh, fresh vegetable from our winter stock, we dig into ground, not to freeze, so we can get the vegetables and eggs, because I sell my product to Tokyo to <laughs> for organic market, but I can't sell because transportation is not working, so I send them. And there was a great shop, shop, after, maybe like after peak oil. So they produce tofu and dry tofu without any fossil fuel, just using firewood, traditional way of doing for them. Because that's why, that's why they don't want to lose their taste from traditional good quality of taste. They don't, they don't want to lose, so they are continuously doing like this method, handy method. So people knows, local people knows, they went to there to get fresh tofu still after, just after earthquake. You know, firewood, old, old style. And firewood, and the, this is bucket for our okara. Okara is uh, after squeezing soy milk we can get for feed, our feed for chicken and the pigs. So I, we know, of course, they can sell. And we know they have oil. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? We are mining, are mining oil to the shop, not into ground. Right? For oh, this car. So we can get waste oil from a shop 
and pour them and make a biodiesel, or we can have a more simple system to use straight vegetable oil operation too. Mm. So we could go a whole to coastal area. We, we went to there every day. The distance was about 70 or 80 kilometers, but we go around so 100. So maybe 200 kilometers per day we have to go and back. But still plenty of oil. And one week later, we asked two friends to get help more, because we need help more. We need car without fossil fuel. So we asked two friends to, who have a uh, SV, uh, straight vegetable oil operation car and biodiesel car. So some of them are coming to help us with lots of waste oil, <laughs> full of waste oil and other stuff too. Actually, this is new oil, just out of date. You know. That's great. And the kids were spring holiday, so they can help. Actually, they could help to filter them. Just simply filter them. And another good car, waste oil. And lots of volunteers come anyhow, you know, with car or some very long way from. And we got an operation, have a town to go, and we did a long meeting, what their needs, because needs change quite often, you know, two days after, three days after, one week after. So up to midnight, we did a meeting and do a computer and send a Twitter or a email to the friends, permaculture people, anybody who can help, and send something. Because we can't get uh, all sorts of things for, uh, we need, I mean the refugee people needs. You know, we are talking about our basic needs to design our permaculture property or our life. You know, we need water, we need food, we need uh, energy, we need heat, of course. So we can't buy any, uh, even a charcoal and portable gas and battery, we can't buy any, all out, sold out. Mm. So, but in Tokyo or Osaka, there are plenty still. So we asked a friend to send or to come get them. So networking was so important. And for us, and actually there was no food and no shop in coastal area. Of course, they are all gone. So we have to take our food to go and back. So, but we have plenty of store, rice. So this is quite enough for us. Seaweed, or radiation, I don't uh, And rice and uh, pickles in, the, in there. So it's enough for us. So every morning, early morning, my wife Junko is making us maybe 20 of them for each volunteer. And two weeks later, we've got transportation. Uh, so. They, uh, lots of friends send us some goodies for the refugee people and collect and, uh, and send to them, like uh, shoes. They just run away from. So without sh any shoes or just sandal, you know, and they get wet. So they have no shoes and no underwear and uh, any sorts of things. But they are quite shy, you know. We, we've got good... Nanda. Uh, no, sorry, I can't understand. <clears throat> Very shy. So if we went to there, and please say what you need and what you want to have uh, next two days or something like that, they always say, elder people say, oh, we enough already, you know, we enough already, like that. So very shy. Or 
They know, you know, they used to live like this simply lifestyle, like a 60s, 70s. So they knew a simple lifestyle. So you know, the Nicholas told us, you know, <coughs> after the peak oil uh, economic crisis, maybe our situation will down the start start of economical growing. It means in Japan, like a lifestyle 1960s. So they know like that lifestyle, so they never complain about it. But young people, oh, we need games and so, oh, lots of things request. <laughs> so we decide not to uh, give the things directly. I just make a free market for them. Means free, you know. And uh, they can take uh, on their need, by their need. So they, then they can take, oh, must be nice, that's really nice, nice, nice. Gratitude. Mm. And this was a basic uh, lunch and dinner for them for, for about months and in refugee center. Only one rice bowl, uh, not one month, maybe only a week like this. <coughs> only rice bowl, one bowl and some one bun and miso soup, it's quite simple. Mm. Was, at, that time, at that time, they quite, they need, actually, lots of elder people who, uh, of refugee people. Uh, there are so many elder people, so they need vegetable, actually. They don't need any eggs or fish or meat. They need, actually, fresh vegetable. So I asked to permaculture friend, organic friend, to hold over the world. Not all over, all over Japan. <coughs> and they send us a lot. So organic and not organic, including some, something like not so good, but still good for them. And you may know one biggest city in the Iwate coastal area, uh, Kamai City. So, in Japan, it, it is said like a miracle of Kamaishi. Because in Kamaishi city, they never lose any kids by tsunami. Because of good training, every year, every once or twice in a year, they did a good training. If we've got tsunami, we have to run away from and go to hillside area. So they did. Their kindergarten teacher did like that. So they never, but that was, oh, such a hard story we had. Because the inside was like this first. Oh. You know how, how, how you, you've got information about that. So they need help to establish temporary kindergarten. They, they could find hillside, at the hillside area. So must be nice to help for them because kids are really priority to help them. So we decided to get, and actually this futon, we had so many futon, old futon, because we hold, held a PCDC at my place, so we collect the old futon for the accommodation, so it was plenty of them, so I just give them. And actually, my youngest kids is going, is a kindergarten kids. So kindergarten kids help kindergarten. Right. And actually, some kids can't get, uh, can't take lunch for their lunch at that, because they are in a uh, refugee center, so there is no rice and extra things. So the priority was to feed them to supply, not to, not to feed, <laughs> to supply them a lunch, good lunch for them. So they, the teachers ask us, can you make a temporary kitchen for them? And oh, maybe, because I've got lots of offer from a permaculture builder from Tokyo and something like that. So I called them and uh, I talked to talk with uh, talked with uh, teachers how much we need how how fast what has facility we need 
and they go back to they went back to Tokyo and get the second hand facility like this quite nicely mm. and they made good kitchen at one week in in a week and kids can get good lunch just after one week that's great of course we uh, supply some vegetables and then our eggs and rice and miso so at least we can have the less and actually uh, the most hardest people who have uh, like emergency like this is uh, weaker people of course like handicapped people and for kids who are having a uh, allergy special allergy we, sub we can supply only ordinary products like or much worse you know having a preservative and uh, of course not organic you know so in the emergency we have to keep longer one so we we only supply preservative including preservative so allergy kids or we have uh, so many people now getting a chemical sensitive syndrome it's we call cs so much uh, much hard situation with allergy so so we ask to organic pet pastry pastry to make a good one without allergy for the for like these kids and send give them that's uh, quite was very difficult to find out like that things mm. And of course, we had an accident, serious accident. In, uh, on the other hand, we had an accident in Fukushima. So we had a big problem of radiation, of course. <coughs> in Iwate Prefecture also, we are uh, uh, 200 kilometers away from Fukushima, but still we've got radiation. That depends on wind, you know. So we used to against nuclear power, of course, permaculture people, of course, used to against, but we couldn't stop them. Eh? And uh, there are uh, lots of friends who are going to do alternative energy uh, skills. So we decide to make a fund for the refugee people to give the small solar panel kit to get light on, because uh, main uh, town in <coughs> uh, main place beside the main road can get uh, electricity after a month or so, but even uh, isolated place has no electricity after the month after a month too. So I, we set up a project to supply small solar panel kit, and they know which is good you know, huge polluting uh, nuclear power. We, we can get smaller one and not so expensive and much delightful. And with community people can manage like this smaller panel and smaller kit, they can manage. Yeah. An ordinary temporary house, they moved to temporary house to, from uh, uh, the refugee center about three or four months later. But again, this is not so good. Ordinary temporary house has lots of uh, um, no good things, artificial things, and very isolated from community. And uh, lots of rubbish after using only three or four years go to rubbish. And it takes a long time to set up. People need a temporary house much earlier. But, uh, you know, they have to get the materials from uh, Tokyo or other parts of Japan. But uh, there are good temporary house made by local timber, by local government, was quicker than our 
national government has done much quicker and much nicer. Can people live like this? It's quite nicely. Mm. So we are going to support this one to put the solar panels, solar hot water system, because the refugee people have to pay their landing cost. They don't have to pay for the house, but they have to pay for. We had a so cold winter. Last winter was so, uh, this winter was so cold. So they pay for a lot of cost for the heating. So we want to cut them. And this is the biggest wall for the tsunami. Uh, biggest wall, uh, bank wall, wall for the protection for the tsunami of the world. So about more than 20 meter, so long, by huge concrete. But it it's not working, not working. Huge infrastructure was not working at all. But there was uh, wisdom from ancestor. So this point, this stone, this is memorial stone to tell us you don't, you can't build a house or live to live lower than this point from ancestor. So people used to move to hillside after tsunami before, but they moved to into flat area again, little gradually, because of economical reason or convenient. So we had a, uh, we had a such a mass again. If we live hillside, all the people uh, just. Uh, <coughs> getting a knowledge from ancestor, maybe not like this big mass. So we want to share like this wisdom with other people and we are going to suggest and we in a much more friendly, eco-friendly way of living and uh, temporary houses and uh, eco-village to introduce eco-village idea. We had a forum, small forum, to in, and invite the permaculture people for local forum. So he is fellow professor. Only one professor can teach permaculture in Japan, officially or formally. <laughs> and he, he is Lim Kyonsu from uh, South Korea. He is de already developed uh, one uh, eco village in Korea. <laughs> He got a long permaculture in Australia. Anybody know him? <laughs> no. <laughs> so we invite them to, my, to our region and to talk about eco village idea. So we want to give the local government pressure eh, to set up more uh, better situation. And like this, they'll have a session for them. Um, and actually, mm, Dr. Itonaga is concerning uh, uh, permaculture development in Fukushima, a uh, small village in Fukushima, f before the tsunami, uh, no, the accident. So try to have a permaculture uh, ecology center in a small village in Fukushima. But, that small village had a big damage from radiation. Here. You, maybe you've got news about our government miss. Not miss. <coughs> uh, they never told us. Uh, uh, that's. Uh, Yosoku. Mm, seriousness, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. <clears throat> mm. Okay. And uh, 
they had already set up permaculture garden and permaculture uh, houses for promoting alternative technology and alternative living way of living for the village people sharing traditional knowledge like this and nicely set up like this small solar, passive solar house and small permaculture garden but now they can't use just a year ago they did set up it's with local government support this project to do uh, permaculture idea that's so sad and the village used to be quite uh, neat and uh, good skills and self-sufficiency lifestyle is still there for local people but now all gone to the far away from this village all has gone so they can't manage you know our landscape is managed by man you know uh, not nature itself we have to manage them to keep like this landscape so this is very hard for the local era people and feeling is to have to go away from their land strong connected land and people are living like this temporary house and very isolated so you know elder for elder people isolating is big is big stress you know not can talk to his neighbors because the temporary houses never think about their their community used to be you know they just select it you know automatically and go into so no not good community very hard to organize but we support actually we have to support them too so we support and to have a small organic garden can do anything because elder people need to move if they sitting or sleeping all the time they go to sick easily now having like this situation a lot a lot a lot even a tsunami after so we set up organic garden to do and yes and another main issue to support Fukushima's people we invite kids to the far away from Fukushima to have a relaxed time because uh, kids in uh, Fukushima they can't play outside only in a hole like this and they can't touch soil not allowed and they can't play like this you know so we organize uh, spring camp summer camp winter camp for the Okinawa or Kyushu or Hokkaido to get them and uh, let them relaxing mm. because kids is easy can can uh, can get affect by radiation than our elder people so we have to save or support a lot for the kids and mr itonaga uh, dr itonaga is uh, having a plan to have a temporary village for them to have a good lifestyle done like a, such a uh, not well organized community with temporary houses so they uh, try to have a temporary village so now struggling with the local government and the national government to set up like this kind of eco village idea i hope we can do like this for the local people too so it is hard high hard but uh, we have a hope like this <coughs> plan to can <coughs> get a new lifestyle for them because uh, again the i want to talk about the problem is the solution you know the 
The creation and uh, destruction is happen at the same time. Our body and the ecosystem, as you know. So we had a huge destruction now in Japan, tsunami, and uh, but we have to get the creation for the new hope, a new world, and uh, yeah. <clears throat> Yes, I have to do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, um, I put my uh, my farm name of my farm is uh, Ureshipa Moshiri. That uh, means nature itself. Uh, I've got uh, this name from Ainu language. You know, uh, Ainu means a human being, as like other indigenous people. And for Ainu people, the nature itself is just reality. Uh, every living thing is grow each other, not competition, cooperation. So for Ainu people, nature itself is like that. So I really impressed this world. So I choose this name for my farm. Or for our farm. So <clears throat> now we permaculture people in Japan has a big uh, trouble because some people have to go away from their land, and of course I might do that if we got the serious. But still. I can say we have a possibility to change. And we want to change from this, this disaster. But we want, I don't want to change with fear, from fear. Because, oh no, I want to change with joyful things, delight. So we have to choose the new way. Even now we permaculture this already has done, but we have to get much more progress for the new change. So that's my hope now. Thank you very much. <laughs>